Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Elendor Chronicles. And it is the Elendor Chronicles this time, um, not the Eladrin Chronicles. We have a pretty, pretty full cast here today, um, except we're missing, currently missing Ghibli and Mordred. Mordred won't be joining us this evening. Uh, Ghibli, we don't know about. So she might make an appearance. She may not. Who, who knows? Things come up all the time. But we're back with another episode of the Elendor Chronicles Season 3. Uh, but before we get on with tonight's uh, broadcast, there's like always, as always, a couple of things that we need to cover. The first one uh, being, um, if you didn't know, see any of the streams last week or the week before, we, uh, we've we updated the merch store. There's some new merch, some old merch, obviously, on there as well, including a What Podcast uh, hoodie that came out on Halloween, which is a very old reference. And if you've been around for the show's... Uh, since the very beginning since the pre-component cast you might get that reference um I, I i've been wearing that hoodie all week however sadly now it's gone into the wash which means like the super softness that a hoodie is before you wash it the first time may forever be lost but i'll let you know um there's also all sorts of things like component cast mugs or all, all that kind of thing i'm drinking out my component cast mug today so yeah if you if you want to rep the channel that's a good way to do it uh the second thing that we want to do want to uh uh, but promo chill on you is um uh, we are now available in christ it is a huge list of places well basically wherever you get podcasts you can now listen to our shows uh pretty much search your favorite podcast app you'll probably find us either under the component cast or the name of the the show precisely also we have a full release schedule going on on youtube now for all of our uh, it's no longer a backlog it's actually coming out every week every time there's an episode on here there's also an episode on twitch later but within a week um so definitely go check out our youtube content our archive content uh if you like our shows finally if you want to support us the best way to do it is via becoming a twitch sub or joining our patreon our patrons uh, we get the best cut of that just to be honest with you but you also get your best things back um it's been a while since we've done anything for patrons but we've got some stuff planned possible handouts etc uh you can get all sorts of things behind the scenes uh early access all all, all sorts of fun stuff it, you can tell it's been a while since i've done a full one of these anyway uh without further ado let's get on with tonight's broadcast shall we back so um this is going to be a bit of a weird one um uh, because there's been two sessions without the full cast but there's also things been going on in the background so rather than a recap let's do a little bit of a just uh we'll we'll, we'll do little bits of a I'll, I'll kind of do something i'll just kind of i'll give a recap rather than a, a, a full cast recap um however i will caveat that if anyone wants to take their portion of what happened in the history i will offer that individual group and it can be shared between the group that were split up an inspiration so either i do the recap or you do your individual pieces and get a shared recap uh, and just a little bit of a, a a show and tell almost uh, for for your sections of the class, should we say? I mean, mine's easy. Reading. <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> and you get an inspiration. There we go. One word. <laughs> what did you read? Yeah. The Book of Annihilation and another piece that 
I'm still waiting on thump, 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 thump. Um, well, you've been, yeah, reading the the book for... The book of Annihilation. Uh, you've yeah, been reading... Me meanwhile, meanwhile the big book James work. are just getting it from the first-hand um, account from, from the Legend Emperor himself. You know, <laughs> you're going to get, gonna get hand. words. You just get words on a page. We're getting, like, you know, from the horse's mouth. Yes, because that's always a reliable source of information. Welcome, welcome to philosophy and also like, was it just modern history 101? Uh, how, where, which is like, because the study of history and well, actually the study of a lot of things is just like, it becomes how how biased is this source? Is the answer yes, <laughs> or is the answer yes Incredibly. but not quite? <laughs> Varying degrees of yes. Yeah, basically. Um, okay, let let me go. Let me let me go. Let me go all the way back then. So. In the recent histories of our group, um, after a confluence of ideas and a diver uh, and diverting paths in what to do next, the party decided to split, much to the DM's displeasure. Um, three of you elected to go to the Eladrin Empire and act as ambassadors to try and track down uh, paths of both uh, further information as to your overarching quest, but also to put a stop to a heinous act that they had uncovered whilst being on the Reynard estate. Um, then we also had uh, the team, the rest of the team split off and do some uh, varying tasks within the Rhaenian Empire. Uh, Breton and Sol took a moment to not only uh, collect themselves and resupply uh, in the area near Modwin, um, but they managed to acquire some very useful items such as teleportation circles um, and teleportation locations before returning back to uh, Ruby's family home in order <coughs> to experience, some, um, take some more respite before finally heading to the capital of the Rien to be undertake some serious research. Um, Zep and Braun met a new friend of theirs, uh, a, a new added friend uh, by the name of Kettle, whose uh, icon, for some reason, is not loading properly on the stream. But uh, And they, since... Looks went, fine on my end. Um, is there a black screen for me on my end, which is... Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, the, the left side's fine, but the, 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 missing, the missing middle bit's not. I'll sort that in a minute. Um, who then went to Lake Ranch Land not only to offload the massive amount of supplies you guys have been carrying for over a month now and make some trades, but also to check in with the Iron Duke and... Uh, also kind of collect themselves with the plan that all three groups would eventually meet back up in the Rien and discuss where to go next. Um, is there any major details that I've missed that anyone wants to try and throw in as, as an opportunity to get yourself some inspiration? The end is coming! Uh, maybe. We'll get to that. <laughs> or won't. <laughs> Depending on how you play, uh, depending on how the dice <coughs> roll. I uh, I think that pretty much hit the broad spectrums that it needed to. Sure. So, um, we are going to head to the Elantrian Empire to start this off with. Where we left you off was after your initial meeting with Elantrian the Immortal. We, you were walking down the corridor following them on as they went to address uh members of state and the party and take more control of their empire again um in these trying times directly right now is there anything you guys want to do or are you just leaving the private sanctum uh i think there's probably not much we should do other than like fall in behind the emperor and just follow him out Feels like a 
would be pretty rude to do anything else. Okay. So you you three um, follow the emperor out. Who, as as they reach the door in front of you, you see their body shape and morph slightly. You see from like the tailored suited jacket that you uh, you saw them wearing, it it, it sort of uh, disapparate away and morph into just a uh, like. A tree-like, um, you see, like Nile, Nile bark and vines, sort of interweaving with one another, like all up their back into like a. It's almost like a, a suit of composite armor made of wood that of like white, pure white bark that is just starts gr almost growing out of them. It's, it's. The only way I can describe this is like it is form-fitting armor that's kind of bulky in places, made of tree. But it seems like a lot of the 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 formal robage has kind of gone and been replaced by this image of strength. Um, is this is this like? Uh the bark skin spell or is this like something just different entirely um kind of like the bark skin spell but it's more like his clothes than his skin it's more like the form that you were looking at wasn't a true form and this is yet another form of theirs um, perhaps, perhaps one more natural. Okay. The Emperor then, um, their voice as well, uh, a slightly different cadence to what you've heard before. Uh, it gives, it's, it's more energized, but kind of deeper in register. Almost like the, with, with this whole shift of form, their personality has shifted with it slightly. They turn to, and as you exit the door, there's a lot of, um, you know that feeling as when you're, I don't know if you know this feeling or if you've seen it in like a film, those moments when when one person notices they go quiet because of like shock and then slowly a party gets quieter as they notice what's going on there is no like need to like call attention to the emperor's presence slowly the room just catches up to it and cottons on and with it just after a moment when everything drops quiet the emperor gives this Momentary speech, and it's it's not a long one. He simply states, In every day at court, in every cycle of our years, there comes a time to dance. There comes a time to reflect. And there comes a time to act. We have been dancing and we have been acting. While I have been reflecting. And in this moment. I have reflected. That I have been lax of late. So, my people, good people of the Eladrin Empire assembled, the empire that you bestow, my namesake. I promise you, our actions will be upheld 
for my best guidance. Give me a insight check as you... Oh, sorry, perception check as you read the room. Yeah, I was about to ask you, are we at, like, uh, at the top of some stairs kind of thing? You're kind of... You remember I described the, the balcony thing, the staircase either side of it with the sort of right. opaque glass? He's gone to essentially one side of that. So are we... Like, ev everyone in this room is, like, looking up at the Emperor and or how... Or at them. Yeah. Or at... Yeah. And are we, like, stood beside him? I'd, slightly no, up behind you're, him? You're probably about 15 feet back. Okay. Um, are we, like, visibly, uh, like, Selena is right beside him. Right. You're, you're, you're known to be there, yes. If that's what you're... Uh, I rolled an 18. Okay. Um, you, you instinctively look for Solana. And you catch her both enamored and... Uh, just give me a quick insight check. Okay. Now that you've noticed her, for sure. For sure. Oh, I'm using a point of luck on that, that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Oh, that's a two, so for a six. Mm. You can't quite tell if she's angry or excited, but there is a vibrancy to her um, as the Elantra the Immortal uh, steps out. With my 18th perception, do I see my mother? Would she be in this room or not? At the party. Uh, I don't think so. Did she ever get... Because you did tell me before that she would be in attendance. Yes, yes, yes she did. <laughs> um, you see her. Um, you see her down from you, not up here in the VIP area. I'm calling it the VIP area. Um, you see her down and sort of in the middle of of one of the lower lower assembled crowds. Does it look like she's seen me? It would be hard to see you at this angle, I think. You're okay. kind of, you've kind of spotted her through, like, the hand railing, but because of height, like, they can only see, basically, a lantern, the immortal, unless you're up at this level. Okay. And there's other people the other side who started sit hearing the talking, hearing everything go quiet, and then they've kind of walked underneath you and gone to look up. It's like... It's not like um, a, uh, a balcony speech from... You know, uh, in front of the entire assembled population of the, the town. This is just like impromptu moment with okay. the party. Um, Ladra and the Immortal then whispers something into Selena's ear, who then approaches you two. Well, you three. Sorry, you two assembled. Um, he says, um, my father wishes for you to enjoy yourselves for the rest of the party and to meet them at the hedge maze at midnight. We'll be there. Very well. She nods and she goes and rejoins him. What would you like to do? As I'm told, uh, I'm going to go enjoy myself <laughs> for the evening. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, that's a, that's a good, oh man, that's a good loyal servant right there. Look, I mean, I All have I problems have... with authority, but like in the opposite direction to like a ruby. <laughs> uh, I, I... All I have to do is show you to a, sh a hot elf, and suddenly, <laughs> putty, both of you. Well, um, yeah, that was terrible. That was terrible. <laughs> Can't really argue with that. I only have eyes for one now. Until the next hot elf turns up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
so you spend some time enjoying yourselves like what, what are you gonna what are you gonna go do? is there anything that you are particularly wanting to do anyone you're particularly wanting to try and find at this party whilst you've now got the time hmm. Valmir, do you want to take some time to try and find that individual that passed the note to Solana I didn't see them it was that was just you so I wouldn't know I mean, you've described them, so we could go and search, but it would be a bit difficult to find a uh, person from just a description. That's true. In a party yeah. of like a thousand or more. It's more. Point. Is there anybody that you would like to find or anything particular you would like to do? Uh, I mean... could find and talk to my mother, but there's... I, I'm not sure. I think, yeah, Vami would, like, try and find his mother and, and talk to her, but there's not much, like... I don't think there's anything that is, like, story relevant that he would want to, like, you know. Okay. It's just a... Just a talking. If, if you want to message me anything you want to talk to her about, we, we, can, we can handle that off camera. Sure. Okay. Well then, you wine and dine the night away. Until you assemble yourselves at the hedge maze. Um, by this point, basically with this palatial event, the party never fully dies. But there are definitely ebbs and flows. Um, there are some people obviously still walking the gardens and the grounds. Uh, but a lot of people have found their residence or rooms or been carried there from having a little bit too much or overindulging. But returning to the form that you saw them when you first met them, the more, I'm just saying casual. Um, it's definitely not casual, but more comfortable human form of the Lantern the Immortal. Um, you meet them at... Uh, you meet them actually with a... Uh, with Selina at the, the hedge maze and a small individual um... Looks to be of some sort of fey ancestry, but you're not sure what. Um, really, really stick thin. Um, probably the height of a human child, but the features of a uh, human pensioner uh, with a slight bluish gray tint to their skin and like beaded over blue sapphire eyes just all like large like almost insectoid um but the rest of them is humanoid and then they've got like really dark blue hair they're in like a little little kind of uh suit almost uh like a butler butlerish attire um with a massive chain of keys like jangling at their side and they're, they're holding a little lantern with little fireflies like flickering in and out to light it. Um, the Evelyn nods. I thought before you leave, it would be remiss of me. If I didn't let you see your friend. Click sticks. Guide us the way. And the little individual just kind of takes the lead and it's like... 
Um, they're shining the lantern in front. And as you notice as they're holding this lantern that the light from the lantern, as it hits the hedges, the hedges part. And you walk a straight line to the uh, gate of the private grotto. That innermost sanctum, which Zaraj attempted to skydive her way into. After a few moments. Um, the smaller individual unlocks the, the the gate and it's it's odd it's it's like an iron gate a wrought iron gate but the gaps in the iron have that haziness that um those of you who went aerially above this area saw very similar but as the gate opens you see this twilight dappled garden of various trees, a running stream, small bridge. Uh, and also it's it's odd because like essentially as soon as you open the gates, you hear like bright bird song that was honestly not heard in the sort of palatial grounds at night where honestly there was fireworks and stuff going on in the background, but it's like the, it's almost just like you've been taken into a zone of silence. Um, from the outsides around you, but in front of you, you're just hearing beautiful nature, peaceful nature. You Does are it then. Look like this is a uh, like a, a roofed building, almost, or is it like we're going into like kind of like a, a going through like a portal or of sorts? Roll an Arcana check. Seventeen. Uh, it's most likely some sort of portal. Okay. Or if not, this area is heavily controlled by magic. Do you progress on through? Or do you progress on through? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, as you walk through... Um, a Lantern of the Immortal turns to you says your friend is over in that glade there with the new growth if you excuse me my daughter and I are going to visit my wife uh, I'll just deeply bow <clears throat> yeah. silently and just Wait till he uh, takes his leave to rise. Mm -hmm. Did did we know that his wife was uh... planted? Yeah. I I did not know that personally. I... W would Valby have known that? No. I think this is probably information that we we are it's not our right to share very well um let's we'll go and try and find uh gourd tree okay give me an investigation check <laughs> Or a oh, nature no. check, whatever's better for both of you. <laughs> They're the uh, same. <laughs> investigation, here it comes. Um, also, as a note, the, the smaller individual waits by the gate and closes the 17. Gate. I got an 18. Oh, also, oh wow. Uh, it, I didn't know this, but our dice can hit off each other yes, in they can. the dice rolly thing. Yes, they can. It works like a dry, dice tray. Look, next time I'm, all, I'm close to rolling a one, someone throw a dice at it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Like n nudging yeah, it like yeah. a slot machine. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. It doesn't take you too long. Um, also, as well, when you see the gate close behind you, uh, the gate like closes and it's just uh, 
an art, it, it's a gateway that's standing freely. There's no walls either side of it. It is definitely a portal in the middle of this grotto. Right. Um, or, or at least entrance to something magical. You might so still Zaraj... be on your plane, but Zaraj is in tune with it. She'd probably yeah. assume that this is a demi-plane of some sort. Okay. You you definitely haven't gone like to the Feywild, but this place is shielded and very magical. In the same way of going into like a Leoman's tiny hut kind of thing. Okay. What is uh what does Gord Tree look like? Um Shane, would you like to describe Gord Tree? Okay, uh sure. Um I would say Gord Tree <laughs> would look like a willow, but a broad leafed willow. Almost like each of the willow branches that would come down were mimicking his braids and the wider leaves would match the um things that he would dangle in his hair and his beard his little goatee beard um <clears throat> the bark would probably be a smooth bark it wouldn't be thick and rough like you would find on like a on an oak i would say um, it'd be smoother, something like you would find on like a birch, but not white and black um, like that. It would be a darker brown, um, almost ashen. Um, and I imagine at this point in time, it might be flowering slightly. And it would have the uh, flowering colors of his eyes. So different shades of blues, maybe an occasional pink petal here and there, some purples. Um, and that's what it would look like. There is a plaque. Um, but it's in... Ah, oh, actually, tell me, you can read any language, can't you? I can. But what language is it in? You're not sure. It's not one that you've seen. Okay. Um, but it says... Peace Walker as the scratchings. I'll pass that along. This would be the perfect moment to talk to Zaraj and knowing what she would want to do here. I think at the very least she'd want to do the um, detect thoughts. Exactly. Or she can, she can also uh, talk to plants. So I'm going to hold off here just for a moment with you guys um, yep. just in case we get um, contact and we might have to retcon some stuff just when mm -hmm. we get here uh, with yep. taking the Gord conversation onwards um, so for now we are going to zoom back out and head ourselves Almost even in days and time now. They're, they're only two days ahead of you, I think. Uh, I need to double check my calendar. But uh, we're going to head to the Rhiannon Empire. And talk to... Uh, and we, we enter this scene within the chapel sanctum of the Emperor of the Rhiannon's uh, palace. Palace complex. With... Ruby and Breton privately conversing and studying the heavy tome that is this first edition version of the Book of Ascension. Can you both... Well, actually, no, let's start with Ruby. Ruby, can you make me a... Wisdom saving throw. You're muted. As well. Just give that a heads up. Uh, I can once I get in. Sure. I can manually roll a die if you want me to. Go for it, yeah. Um... My wife got me these very beautiful liquid core dice for my birthday. Oh, Ooh. nice. 
Oh, show, show, show us, show us before you. <laughs> Hang on. Don't, don't, don't tempt us with dice and not show us. How dare? Yeah. <laughs> clackety clackety math rocks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me let me break one out. Here's a here's a d20 here. Ooh. Oh, that's a nice bit. color. Yeah, it's trans approved. colors. Approved. I'm massively approved. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Uh, that is an eleven plus numbers. I don't know without looking, but. I think my save is by two, so 13. Uh, plus three, uh, next to Bre Bre Breton. Yeah, Breton, 16. so 16. 16. Yeah. Okay. 15. Yeah. You don't know if it's the long hours you've been pulling or the tiredness or whatever. Um, but as your. Sorry, I'm just replying to something. I'll, I'll come back to oh, you. Sure. It's not like the end of the world, is it, Stike? Not yet. Depends upon your actions. Hmm. Well, I guess that's just D&D &D in a nutshell, though, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Sorry, yeah. Um, as, as you... Um, You don't know if it's the tiredness getting to you, the long hours reading the book, or just your mind playing tricks on you. But you start as you start to look at the book in front of you. You notice as you turn the page to the next chapter of scripture you notice the words shuffle slightly I think I need a break right. you've been going for hours it's not surprising I'm starting to see text on my eyeballs and I'm not even looking at this book and now it looks like the book's on me. Breton's going to take the book and look at it. Sure. Give me a wisdom saving throw. 29. 29. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, that's... Uh, it just looks to be a book, Bren. <laughs> um, Paladin. No. Um, <laughs> yes, Paladin. That's the exact answer to that I question. I didn't get a 29. I rolled a 19. I have a plus 10. A plus Jesus. 10. It's it's their saving throw, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah. It's, they get charisma and... Or, or is it strength and wisdom? Uh, and wisdom. I get to add my charisma to it, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and wisdom, wisdom is one he's proficient in. That's right. That's that's Ooh. the right... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but, Breton, as you scan the text, you do see the texts, the text, hello, Andrian, halfway through a chapter. So, I'm going to read this as it's written on the page, and let's just see if this sounds out of place. And he's just going to basically read, <laughs> yeah, read, like, the small blurb around that. Yeah, it's talking about, like, um... And so they did giveth arms to. Uh, it's like really out, and it's just hello, Andrian. And then like, and then like the ink spreads, and then the, the the text continues again. It's very labyrinth. Yes, <laughs> labyrinthian. Let's, let's go. I'm, get, I'm getting some David Bowie vibes out of this. I think it's... the book is talking to you. <laughs> I think it's been talking to me for four days straight, but she's still rubbing her eyes, probably not noticing or even noticing that it's talking to her actually. No, 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 no. Listen to the words I'm saying. I think the book is trying to talk to you. She pauses. But if you're making a joke, the book is not a mimic. And Britain just stares at her. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yes, hello. 
Hi. I don't suppose you can be a little more forthcoming with any knowledge, because I've been translating you for a week straight, and I feel like my brain is about to fall out of my ears. You give it a moment. Breton. Mm hmm. Make an investigation check. Investigation. Well, that just immediately went downhill for what I can do. Uh, it's not a high DC. Uh, I rolled another... Oh, 16. Uh, 17. You look... The text in front of you doesn't change, but you flip the page. And the first line of the first, next page is, What is it you seek? Yes, uh, the book is responding now. <laughs> For the first time, she actually pauses. Yeah, we didn't hear a word of that. Could this not have happened a week ago? You know what? Okay. You could be frustrated, or you could just treat this as a reward no, no, for an no. act of faith. No, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm just... Sorry, I'm tired and I'm hungry. I'm hangry? Is that kept is, is that a thing? Um Hello. To whom am I speaking? The right word? Reading? Who to whom am I Conversing? Reading? I might might be conversing? Yeah. Way to... Hello! To whom am I conversing with? There's a subtle warmth from the book, Breton. Every time she, uh, every time it processes. Uh, what would you? Where would you like to? Oh, are you going to turn the page? Are you? Yeah, uh, I imagine it, it's it's difficult. I imagine Breton scans the page, just mm -hmm. looking for. I imagine he starts looking for like the ink stains that signify like the original text has changed. Mm. You see. Give it, again, give me another investigation check quickly. Hopefully we're getting better at this so we don't have to keep doing it. Yeah, it's it's only because you're doing the first. Uh, yeah, that's a four. <laughs> you, you flip a couple of pages and you get, get a bit lost, but then you come back and like, you do find... Uh, like, but the problem is it fit in with the, the paragraph a bit more. As I said. Mm -hmm. It says, one in service. Sorry, one who is in service. So either there is a spirit who's turned the Never King bound to this book, or there's some clever magic going on. Uh, I have immediate theories. I won't speak them aloud, but uh, this is a chance to ask those questions you want to ask. Maranke? Maranke? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly as the player to dm uh oh what the angelic name yes uh let me let me grab that out uh christ um it's been a while it's yeah, merank 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 um uh, no, no, i would say with the a it would be a merank because it's older merank so, Um, you were just saying that that name. Your question, yeah. Uh, after some search in Breton, you get not they, but another. Yes, um, not them, and uh, I understand your curiosity. Again, important questions should probably lead the, the fray here rather than just who you're talking to. Yeah. I don't have all the context, but I have translated this book from what it was originally written into. And though... The puzzle pieces do not all fit yet in the order to which they should. 
I am quite confident that we are at the end of times and that the puzzle is before us. I am trying to put the puzzle together because I want to save this world from itself and from those who would destroy it. Can you help me put the puzzle together? I cannot interpret the nine shadows without it. <laughs> weren't expecting that to be put forth were you no no i'm not i'm not i wasn't expecting what i just rolled <laughs> oh okay not sure if one or 20 but i'll take it either way it was a fuck you so it's a 20 um <laughs> oh cool thank you natural 20 oh. breton the book leaps out of your hands. Oh God, mimic. And begins to float in front of you. The, the pages glow gold and all of the text melts away and images begin to appear as well as f almost scroll-like like writing, like something is writing this book in front of you. In the wording, you see not the end, an end, an end avoidable, an end beginning. And then you see, um, you see an image of, um, a, a large shadowed individual, uh, thick black robes robes as black as night as black as death being cleft in twain by another smaller individual holding a flaming sword uh, that it's it's kind of uh amorphous but this is like the shapes you're getting and it it cutting them in half the page then swipes and uh flips and turns and then you see the same image but the the image the end of the the huge shrouded individual being cut in half and light bursting out of them uh immense force being thrown around every everywhere and everyone in this what looks to be now the drawing of a battlefield you the see cleaving of the rule you see this other individual the, the 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 pages flip and flip and flip and then you see the individual with the sword um like drawing up the the power the burst forth of this this slain shadowed figure um you then see the the book almost completely turn massively you see um images of um far off pyramids and uh desert climbs and in loads of um humanoid figures um going about their day-to-day -day life and then suddenly uh, the next page you see the same image but the the areas devoid of life the pyramids mostly covered in a thick uh thick layer of snow you then see the pages flip more and more and you just get images of what seem to be like the connecting history or elements of histories you can't make out all of them but there's things you definitely pick up on you definitely see uh, as uh, as a page come forth you see uh, a silvered knight um standing before what seems to be a small cave and in front of them uh they're on horseback and they're like sort of looking towards what seems to be like a cloaked individual um holding a broken sword um and you and you get flips of history of history of history until like it gets to the last page and the book then settles back in your hand and on that page you see the text follow me
there is a place where the king ascended. Mm -hmm. It was always rumored to be in Solarum. I think we just got a, a far more tangible amount of proof. That cave, that cave, I... In the cat, the pyramids must be the 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 Azdakian Caliphate. Once was snow. Once was sand. Was now is snow. Do you think the Never King took the divine essence of the god he slew, Nerul? I don't pretend to know how any person becomes a god, but it, I suppose if we just follow a little bit of power struggles and power vacancies, uh, if one falls, then one presumably would take its place. Mm. But he's not the god of the dead. That's... Greg, DM, that's Kelimvor, or is that... Um, it's, uh, there's, there's, the, with how it currently works, with those who, it is said that those who die in Elendor are greeted by three gods. Hmm. Um. Kenobor is one of them. The king that never was is another. And uh, Caphriel the Law Singer is the other. All three of them judge you. Rayla's daughter. Yes. Okay. They weigh you, they weigh you in judgment. It's like a... Yeah. Tripartite the of it. <laughs> sure. Um... <laughs> but in front of you is still this book with the open page saying, follow me. Ruby will walk over to it and put a hand on the book and look at the next page. It's on the final page, but as you put your uh. hand on it, the lighting in the room, it feels like there's a gust of, and a gust of wind kicks up. <sighs> uh, uh, the, and it's like the dancing of like candles and stuff. The, the candle flame now kind of arcs and points directly points out of this room well far about me from follow the signs um <laughs> she will i'm not allowed to take the book out of here am i no you're not meant to if i Follow me. Okay, I'm gonna hope that Brett and stay here, guard the book, I'll go, or other way around. I don't think we can take the book out of here. I'm Brett is just kind of looking at this old affair like I think he would understand. <laughs> uh, okay. She will walk out and open the door. So you're taking the book from Breton. Oh, uh, there is no like closed door in like it is like it. Yes, yeah, she was, then she will hold the book and walk out with it. Okay, you're taking the book from Breton. You walk out, um, and as you do, like you feel like you're being. I'll oh, make an insight check. Uh. All right, well, we're all on screen because I'm messing this up. Uh. Insight. That's a uh, sixteen. That is. You feel like that there, there's an aura, an essence around you that's pulling you and pushing you slightly. It's, it's, it's as subtle as the wind on your neck, but there is definitely a guidance. And like as you, as your eyes say, meet candles in the hallway. The flames, the candles flicker and then like bend, and okay, begin to essentially point different directions for you. She will follow the. Colors Red, of the wind. Red, Red, are you going with? 
absolutely. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Somebody has me. to make sure she doesn't somehow get herself killed in all this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Um, Breton, make another perception. Make me a perception check. Please. Sure, perception. Uh, 11. Um, the comings and goings of the, the castle has, uh, or the fort, uh, the palace has become more and more to your know, to know, to your knowledge. Like you've been here numerous days now, you know, sort of the hustle and bustle of this place. Castle looks a lot emptier than normal, whether there's something going on or otherwise it's like, mm, there's not nearly as many people in this hallway. There's no guards around here either. Like, it's a lot clearer. Uh, Breton will not call that out to Ruby, but he will take a specific note of that. Sure. Um, at the end of the hallway in front of you, you're going down this sort of long quadrant, and uh, eventually you, you go towards this door that <laughs> wind kicks up and lifts the lock up and opens it. And in front of you, you have a clean view of, uh, this seems to be a side door out into like part of the palace grounds uh, atop the hill here. And just, you're on enough of an incline and enough of a part of the hillock that you are able to see over the, the, the wall, the outer wall, towards the Cathedral of Ascension. And in front of you, you see the cathedral, um, The cathedral in front of you is lit up. It's a sunny afternoon, um, which is strange for winter, but not outwardly so. But it's like there is pure light emanating out of the cathedral. Light bright enough right now that you can see beams during daytime that are being fractured and um, displaced by the stained glass, causing almost like this radiant glow from the cathedral. There is a procession leaving it. Uh, there is a procession, sorry, entering the cathedral. Uh, there are crowds gathered, and it seems like there's something relatively big happening. Hmm. Shall we? No point in stopping now. Um, she'll put the book in her backpack. Sure. Just so it's out of sight. And then I guess they make their way towards it. As you do, <laughs> you um, you begin to maneuver through the, the the crowds and the individuals around. It seems like. Nobody, and like you hear, like from the moments of the crowd, nobody really knows why they're here. It's a case of like they heard that something was happening at the cathedral, so they've come here to try and look. And there's various sort of like members of you've seen them before the the like the knights from uh, of the faith of the uh, sorry like uh, the ones that look to be like fully clad armored bishops with like a bishop's mitre into the helmet. Those ones are like. The, the uh, like the, the cathedral guards like the big sort of um uh like royal not royal but they're the direct bodyguards of the the king bishop and of the of churches etc within uh the rien are like sort of holding crowds back kind of thing um not letting them fully into the cathedral grounds. I think we need to get in there. 
I'm more confused of what could be calling them here and why would they be being rejected? Deus will call the faithful home if Deus still stands to claim their own. You think you can talk your way in? Can... Potentially. And they will try to go up to the crowd. Wait, the... Or wake their way through the crowd to get in. Sure. You you slip and slide between the crowd. It's it's more it's not like people are being like it's not like a riot where people are like being held back. It's like a loads of individuals sort of like what's going on? Like, that kind of thing. Um until you are level to level with these uh bishopric knights. I can't actually remember what I called them uh, in my world, so I'm going to call them Bishopric Knights now. I did give them a specific I name. Knight Emeritus or something. No, but I can't, can't remember, but... Um, yeah, they had a name. I don't remember what it is, but... Uh, it's somewhere. We move. We move. We, we're keeping with the story right now. <laughs> sure. Yeah, she'll try to get in. So, um, what, what, do you, what do you say to the individuals? She will walk up to them. Sorry, I'm shifting because I'm I'm excited. Um, <laughs> I'll, you keep talking. I'll adjust your camera. I will. I need to get in. And she just looks at them with a a look that just it has that intense. I am on a mission from God. <laughs> uh, Breton will say, as if attempting to aid in this, as a. We are here under the authority, not specifically, but we have been invited here under the authority of the Emperor on uh, religious research. Ruby, make a persuasion check at advantage, and you may also um, add 2d4 to that. Uh, 26. Before Breton even finishes his explanation of um, we're here on religious research, like the 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 the, the piked mace, because they, they use like a, a spear-sized mace, these individuals, like raises, and they let you through. Ruby, you felt like there was just something powerful guiding what you said that it, it, it was Breton. Clearly. <laughs> Absolutely. Totally Breton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to be fair, he had something powerful that guides what you say. <laughs> let's, let's face it. You have no idea. <laughs> he, he, I, I may be the steering wheel. He's the hands. <laughs> uh, no, she will go in. Both. There's a holiness around her that's not usually present. You both feel it, to be fair. Mm -hmm. The woman who, not even a couple months ago, could not help but raise her nose at religion. Yep. I is right here. Oh no, there is, like, if Zadar learns of this, he's going to be like, <laughs> I, I knew it! <laughs> he's not worshipping Bahamut, get over it. He's just, I could just imagine, like, a but like uh, just an out you know like an ending scene of like zadar like you know like as like the the end credits come out like an old sort of 60s maybe movie so like you actually get like a, an ending like um like a <laughs> tableau an em ending tableau of this whole campaign and what it is is like we've had the final scene uh, the camera pans everyone leaves the room zadar is the last one to leave and as he's in the door, he like jump clicks his heels, and that's the final frame. And it's then they're like the, the credits <laughs> roll. That's, that's what I'm imagining for this entire campaign. Is right now just... he's interpreting science, and he just saw hell freeze over. And, and then you just watch, and then like the whole thing is because uh, Zada, I told you so. The story, <laughs> like as, as it goes. I mean, um, he inadvertently converted like all of us to Bahamut worship in some form or another, which is. 
uh, weird for me because he's not the Bahamut wasn't even a major god in my world, and now <laughs> it's having a massive hey, resurgence. Listen, massive resurgence. You, you all say I switched characters. I said Sadar did uh, set out to what he wanted to do. He wanted to spread the worship of Bahamut across the world. He's done that. <laughs> <laughs> Massively. Right. Okay. Anyway, back to the back in. Back in. Um, Get on with it. You feel the pull towards. Um, you feel a pull into the cathedral itself. Um, where in front of you, you are met with a ceremony. And it's odd. There's been like these more of these guards, etc., and individuals. Uh, taking part, but no one has kind of noticed you. You feel free to be where you are without any impediment. But in front of you, you see in adorned in regal robes uh, the Emperor of the Rian on their knees there are individuals uh, adorning them in the, the the nectar of the gods, uh, the the you know the bluish, uh, petaled, uh, fragrant waters that flow throughout Albion temples. Uh, they're, they're like sort of bathing his hair in it. Um, there are other like other individuals like putting ceremonial like gauntlets onto their onto their um, arms uh and before them uh an individual i don't think either of you have ever seen but adorned in as equally if not more regal robes um stood in front of them praying is an individual that is quite clearly the king bishop Um, and they are praying aloud in what sounds like um, Old Albion. Very Gregorian chanty. Yes, and it is quite tuneful in that regard. Um, and with, with this being a cathedral, it just echoes the space. Um, and you're in the, the main sort of central chamber here, which is circular as well. Uh, and you're kind of up some steps from where they are, like to the, the very center of this cathedral, because I've never described it actually, because you've never been in directly, is a giant circle um, or almost like, it's not a flat circle. Like it's not, not a flat circle, you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of um, got crevices and nooks and it's almost gear-like. But not a, it's not a perfect gear. Like mm -hmm. It's not. It's not like we're sitting in the giant gears of war symbol kind of. Like it's. It's not that. But it's a circular um, chamber with a large um, hole for the sun yeah. in the ceiling. Stained glass is all around of various gods of the various pan um, gods of the pantheon. Um, or showing major scenes from the, the religious histories. Um, each one of the, the main uh, main members of the, the the pantheon have a statue around this room, and then it's like steps down. But in, and then in between the steps, there's like a line of steps, waterfall, line of steps, waterfall, line of steps, waterfall into this circular middle basin, with then a circular central basin in the middle. Um, and you're up like one of those staircases looking down in on this. Does the wind in my back tend to try to guide me down? No, it's kind of just surrounding you right now. But there's a warmth. Uh, Breton does speak Albion. Admittedly, he doesn't probably understand old Albion as well as he would. But he would do his best to basically garner the best of what this is representing to uh explain that to ruby sure um it seems to be a prayer um and it's a 
It's a variation of a very well-known prayer. It's in in the same way that in um, this is the very this is this is a very English reference. I don't know if they have the same in a lot of denominations they have over in the U.S. But um, if you're Church of England Christian, uh, we have a thing called the Lord's Prayer, which kind of everybody. At yes, some we, point. there is there is a Lord's Prayer in the U.S. too. Yeah, I, I don't I, I don't know if it's in the same, but it, in in the U.K. it makes it its way into a lot of uh, societal things, especially in in Britain. Like uh, scouts used to have to be able to recite the Lord's Prayer and things. It's like very nice. So it's like it's it's a common prayer that is um, known as the Prayer of the Lights, and essentially it's like. Um, various influence it, it basically describes the various influences of the the gods of the albion pantheon <laughs> but instead of it being um like past tense this version of the prayer is being said in a like sort of present tense or a, a it's whether well, actually no it's like a close future um as if these powers are going to be given rather than have been given. It seems like a... It seems like a bestowment. You can't tell if it's a gift of power or authority. Those words can be somewhat used interchangeably something very hmm. emerging that time forgot but in a slip the heavens call and if all f if all fails the seal will fall and in that moment I don't want to interrupt the prayer, but I think we need to be down there. I think that we are here and we are aware of it. But I do not then, think there is a thing that we could say down there that would interrupt or stop whatever it is. Nor do I think we should try. Then she will just say, we're here. The... On one of the um, as you like look down the stairs in front of you, there's like um, oh gosh, what's it called? Um, where it's like a plaque, but it's in the floor <laughs> and it's carved from stone. This is a really, really dumbed down description. Uh, but essentially you look down there's like every four steps there's one of those and you look actually there's one beneath your feet and the text on it a ledger stone um possibly laid I in the, it's laid in the floor of a church yeah kind of kind, yeah. kind of okay um yeah i got you the one the one in front of you the uh the the text in front of you on the one that in front of you just says behold and she will watch. Very well. You... You, um... You sit and you watch the ceremony unfold. Eventually, the emperor stands and is face to face with the king bishop. The king, the king bishop switches 
um, to common at this point, once the prayer has been finished. My power of the king that never was. By the grace of these nine lights gathered here in sanctimonious bliss. Listen. I call upon the power to grant you aid and arm against those who would destroy the faithful. And as the King Bishop finishes, um, a group of individuals come out of a side chamber. Uh, you hear the door click before you see them because they come out of what looks to be a tunnel where initially water was piling up and they actually pass through the water um, being wet by it as they do. Um, and the first of the procession is holding what looks to be an orb and a mitre, uh, sorry, a, a scepter. Um, the next, uh, like, the next four are holding, like, banners with iconography in. And they all just, like, as they meet, like, the one with the, the, the orb and the scepter hands it to the, the king bishop and then takes a step back. The ones with the banners stand around um, the emperor. And then finally, there is one that... Um, is holding uh, on a pillow a helmet. I didn't want to interrupt, Mitch. He said nine lights here gathered. The moment that Breton heard that, mm -hmm. uh, he would divine sense. Mm. Sure. To see. Obviously, I imagine this entire place is powerful consecration and blessing. Oh, yeah, massively. <clears throat> but he's starting to pick out, like, other instances like how many things in this room are just giving off like massive celestial or like radiant energies or fiendish um okay i have a caveat to this question okay are you just looking for Celestial? Uh, I mean, he can pick up Celestial, Fiend, or Undead. Sure. Okay. Uh, it it radiates rem those response to those. Okay, cool. That's good. I, uh, I just needed to know the full extent of that list. Thank you. Um, massive, massive Celestial energy. In fact, mm -hmm. each of the statues of the other gods within the Pantheon, the Nine Lights, um, is giving off a different Celestial aura. Breton just potentially realized something, but that'll wait till after this is over. Mm. Dude, uh, yep, dude. yep, nope. That just that just that just, that just dawned on him. That, okay, that just confirmed some things, or <laughs> yep, or, or... that 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 may have just confirmed something for him. Click. <laughs> ah, yes, I love D and D, especially it's especially when um, I give people homework and then they're like, hmm, I wonder about this, and then I say things and they go, <laughs> it's great. Turns out that was on the test. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly that energy. It's exactly that energy. Um, and the how they the king bishop. Um, you see like an aura of power like in their hands as they almost like knight the the emperor with the uh, scepter and then hand him the scepter and then they kiss the orb and hand them the orb. And then finally they turn and take the helmet. The helmet with prominent stag um, antlers sticking out of it. And place it on there. There's the seal. Britain just 
nods his head in affirmation of that. Which then, as soon as it uh, like sits on the Emperor's head, <clears throat> like a... You've seen the spell Fairy Fire before as um, individuals, where it just like glitters like, a surrounding area with light and like outlines everything. Kind of a similar but celestial radiance just emits rapidly from the Emperor and like sh covers everything around you in like really, really like just a celestial glow. Um, and then th you didn't realize it because obviously you stepped into this chamber and you were uh, down to it. But after a few moments, all of the celestial energy sort of fades and also the extra light that was being produced in it, it didn't look like out of place here but you you, you caught on onto it because this this whole chamber got like more naturally lit um like moonlight oh, sorry sunlight started coming through the correct direction of the window kind of thing which didn't it didn't clock onto you because obviously it's like you know when you go into an office building and it's all that kind of white light and then someone turns off the light and suddenly it's like oh there is an outside world um it's kind of like that but essentially everything kind of fades back to normal. You're guessing the massive glow that you saw outside has since faded. And um, the Emperor stands, um, hands the scepter and the orb back to the King Bishop. And everyone sort of begins to file out. Um, this, this might be a long shot here, Mage, but I have uh, Breton having seen that and knowing what they know of the seals uh and this may be was it just broken repaired actually would be the word for it no. uh not good either know. way <clears throat> when brett if brett will use another divine sense mm -hmm. is the presence of any one of those statues that was representing a divine awareness does it seem any lesser Like with this, with this advent, with this returning of this, but with this seal being returned to its state that it was uh, not supposed to be returned to, has that affected a presence that was here? Give me a. Give me a perception check. Perception check. I am. Ja I don't have inspiration on this. I am wondering if I have anything I throw in this. I don't. Roll good. Twenty-one. Okay. 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 The celestial radiance of the room has definitely, like the statues, like the elements. There's like. There isn't as powerful. There's like there is like an idle hum from them, but there's nowhere near that radiant glow on any of them anymore. Um, but there is definitely a strong sense now, f directly from the emperor. Okay. Um, yeah, that's about all you can sense with the limits of the spell. All right. But I kind of, I think I'm following your wavelength. Yeah. I'm just going to nod. <laughs> sure. Uh, and as this, as this is finishing up, uh, Brett, we'll just say nine lights, nine shadows. As each light falls, a shadow rises. There are seals, yes, but I think each of the lights represents one of the gods, one of the nine lights of the Pantheon of Alde. And the gods I think fail? With... That's part of it, isn't it? The gods eventually falling into nothing, but each light may represent each god failing to have any further power, any further presence. This is not just about seals breaking. This is about the, the seals and the connection to the gods. I was curious that... With each one that is restored, does that in turn sever more of that god's influence on the plane? But that's speculation. And with this reconnected seal, another god was just sealed away. Or their power was. I... 
think it opens the door. For all we know, opening the seals, repairing them, might be what makes them vulnerable to otherworldly influence. But it was definitely... I do believe we just witnessed the seal being opened. So an end is coming. We were shown this for a reason. I think at this point, if the book has anything left to say, now would be the time to read it again. Yeah. Ruby will pull out the book. Okay. Every page in the book is blank. Not even the original script is there. Every page right now is blank and faded. Oh, you're oh. in trouble. <laughs> Something's been severed. We need to talk to the Emperor. Yeah. Is he still down there? Um... Yes, but he seems to be being led out next with the King Bishop behind him and also like the the various members of the ceremony, like in procession. He is leading them out of what seems to be now like a large double door that is also opened in this like lower chamber. Um as a probably a different exit of the <coughs> cathedral. Different location. Let's not let's not interrupt what's going on, but let's just follow true and yeah. when he has a moment and realizes he needs to speak with us, let him approach us. Yeah. Okay. Um are you gonna follow them directly? I don't imagine like they fall into the procession. I'm or like just keeping track of where he's going and just basically being in the like I imagine if they're heading back to the main hall, they well would like make their way into the main hall and just kind of stand off to the side as if like they're here for a reason that yeah they're kind of heading into an area that you haven't been to or seen um mm. it's it looks to be either you don't know if it's fully going out of the cathedral but it's going to an area that you've never been to like you guys haven't actually explored the cathedral all that much you've been to a side building within the cathedral grounds i believe uh soul when she was here but uh, and nor have you been actually tell me um Brett, in the time in just in your life and in your time here now how much have you been around the capital of the Rien? like how well do you think you would know or know of the city? um I honestly, I don't think Brent, Breton has spent much time at all around the main stage of the Rien because his father was from Nardafel. Hmm. So it, he probably would not have exposed him much to Rien and uh, the capital of that. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is just as foreign to him as it would be to Ruby. Okay. You kind of follow it and you also, you're kind of 30 feet back from the procession kind of watching them as you you follow down you, you like climb down the steps and you follow them through nobody stopped you yet or anything um ahead of you doors open and you see the horizon looking out over the east mere. and it's clear that these individuals are taking play, pay, taking their space on a balcony or overlook of some sort I imagine he's about to dress the people. And... Yeah, it's... I don't know if you've ever seen... Um, the moment a new pope ever makes it out uh, comes out onto the balcony of um of the, of the vatican and looks over the 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 
St. Mark's Square. Is it St. Mark's Square? No, St. Mark's Square is in Venice. Um, gosh. What's the, the big open square in the Vatican? You know, where um, people gather. St. Peter's Square, isn't it? St. Peter's Square, that's it. Yes, it is St. Peter's Square. You're right. Um, and there's just crowds of people. This is the same, except like the... <sighs> The balcony is set into the side of the cliff and is overlooking a large square um, with hordes of people gathered. And Ruby's just watching. The Emperor begins to give a speech to a abundantly gathered crowd. The the speech is long, but and various people speak, but the cliff notes of and final lines of what the emperor says are the following. The guidance of our faith has been brought into question. Your beliefs, your faith, your dignity, and your way of life has been threatened. I promised you, as your emperor, to protect you, to lead your armies and uphold your values, your protection. I do this as your emperor, but now, with the power vested in me by the church and the gods above. I do this as a protective avatar of your faith. A tenth light to guide you. And with that rupturous applause, cheering. The Emperor is then um, the Emperor then takes his step away from the balcony. Well <laughs> he notices you. Um, this is no longer a man of late 60s. He looks to be about... He looks far more like his son. You can still tell it's him, but there is a renewed youth to this individual. His hair less graying his face flush with more color, his eyes slightly omniscient glow to them. And he looks at you too. And then he looks to your left, to the invisible space next to you. And nods.
He turns to one of his servants, whispers in their ear, and then the servant comes towards you. I have a feeling we just walked into a trap. Uh, Emperor, or is there something new we should refer to you as now? Uh, it's the the servant came towards you, not the. Emperor. Is there? We're still in a crowd of people watching the. No, you you were back behind them in the. Don't you didn't go down to the crowd. You yeah. You're, you're, you're we watching them. that from behind. Um. And the servant comes and says, "Um." Uh, I'm. I, the emperor understands that you would want to speak to them. Um. He requests you meet them at the palace tonight, this evening. Uh, Burton will nod. Yeah, Sorry, I thought we were with the crowd. No, you were. You went behind them. You you followed, okay. followed them up. So you were watching that from behind. Uh, and the emperor just nods at you, and um, leaves. Uh, he kind of like clears frame is the way I'm going to describe it because he goes to like to the left of the door that you've kind of been looking through or the tunnel that you've been looking through that's kind of encapsulated and silhouetted your view um, but yeah people it kind of like you still have that presence around you by the way yeah um And Breton, you would have guessed that it's also slightly um, Yeah, you it the power around you also feels a little bit weaker, but it's there. There's a presence there. Still. Hmm. Turn to the palace, I guess. Sure. Um, so group assembled. Of individuals, uh, we're probably going to take a shorter session today because we're now down three people, uh, as I know. There are only four of us that remain here, um, but I'm going to I'm gonna <laughs> open. Four that remain, and half of them are in the same room. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. it's just split in two locations, and it's just two twos, that's... <laughs> two twos. Two twos. Um, but, like, yeah, it's one of those things of, like, there's still some scenes we can do, but I don't want to progress too far. Uh, as obviously people sure. probably want to weigh in. Um, so uh, I'm going to open it to Team Aladrin or what remains of Team Aladrin. Is there anything you guys want to do? Or is there anything that you guys need to cover before? Because um, we're going to probably have to take a short session. And I'd rather us like work this through now and then and then go from it from here. Uh, and then... Yeah, yeah. Um... Basically, would there be a moment at some point between when the Emperor had, um, basically when we had our meeting with him and... Aladrin the Immortal, yeah. Yes. A lot of the Emperors. Emperor. A lot of Emperors. No, the Emperor. Anyway, well, the Emperor come uh, for our situation, mm -hmm. for Team Aladrin. Um, would there be a moment for us to have some like time in private? Uh, yeah, like there was like three hours before you met them again at the garden. So, um, sometime during those three hours, uh, we would have used the Zep Stone mm -hmm. to uh, do a couple of messages to Zep. Mm -hmm. um, basically, inform him because we don't think he actually knows, or we we have no information on whether he knows or not about the um, the Rien's, you know. Uh, purge plan and uh, so that's that's something we want to tell him about um about how we 
went to the Eladrin Empire to try and stop the war. And then also want to tell him about... There's been loads um, of days, so I'm pretty sure that Zep knows about the the, the purge plan. Yeah, I, but, I, I like, believe... If not, we, like, you've got... Oh, you've also oh, yeah. had, like... Because remember, you've... You've had... You've been in the Eladrin Empire over a week now, so you've got loads of time that you could have been conveying things yeah. to Zep. But yeah, if anything you want to tell him, just message um, yeah. Mordred about it. Oh, we'd want, we'd want to now tell him about Eladrin the Immortals' um, offer, basically, of um, if we can facilitate a meeting between all the, the heads of state, um, then we'll be able to get Gord back mm -hmm. and basically ask him to trans uh, like transmit that kind of message to uh, Duke of Legrungsland and mm -hmm. see if he will um, come to the table. And also, if there's a uh, maybe we could use the Skyfire ship as that meeting place. Because it would be neutral territory, I guess. Sure. Okay. You can definitely have um, relayed that. Um, so, as a note then, Breton and... Ruby, you would have heard about that yesterday. Because <laughs> there's still a two-day gap right now between the parties, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so you would have heard about that yesterday because it would have been the day after the party. The party was on the 15th. Uh, you guys are currently on the 17th. Hey. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. And Zep will be joining you on the... He'll be heading to the Rien... Or he starts heading to the end by oh my god, where's my notes? <laughs> of your clickety clashy clashy time zone world zones. Um eighteenth. So he'll be arriving with you tomorrow. Does Zep have a way of uh talking to Ruby and Brett? Yes. yes. Okay. Zep is central command on comms. So he can get you a message to them to, and I think, well, I think technically, you or like Breton has con conversation has had the ability to have conversation with James and with um, Zep. Zep yeah. has the ability to talk to Breton, James, and Anton, and James has the ability to talk to Breton and Zep. Mm -hmm. It was a triangle of communication. It's yeah. it's still like playing phone tag, but it can yeah. be done. Yeah, it yeah. can be done. Okay, so I guess you guys will also know that we need to try and I'm, yeah, I'm get, sure get people uh, get for, the main For the together. sake of my own sanity, I will allow you to parcel information to each other by the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> by the grace uh, how, of all when, holy entities did, did in this would, world. Um, something like uh, a week or nine days to get the entirety of the um, prophecy of ascension um, <laughs> transferred. Yeah. I mean, there are... Other Along with the message of, we just watched a seal get repaired. You, well, that's up to what you guys, I was about to ask, what do you two want to do now? Because you know, you've got a meeting with uh, the Emperor of the Rien later. Is there anything you want to do before then? Right, now I'm still trying to wrap my head around what's going on. Are you going to do a sending to us to say that you what you just witnessed? Uh, I'm, st not, no. I'm, st I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. So right now, no. Because yeah, okay. Breton's not going to just jump off the hat and just send a message in speculation. Um, he, Breton... Well, it, we just watched the gods bless uh, the emperor with the with the avatar of their divine justice is it's his own word like this is them granting divine authority to him to to can continue this effect to protect their very way of life uh, it does seem like the the head the stag helm was a part of that and that it, in fact the seal is being used as a perhaps you'd even call it a conduit for this power to be gifted to him uh, he is being given the authority by the gods to basically wage this war and protect the Rien. Mm. 
it seems I mean it's it's it seems to me that this isn't obvious that it's it does seem to fit into one of the one of the predictions that uh, of this of all times would seem like things are going to get better but in truth this is just going to be this is just the beginning if he dies a new will take them if only to yet be mistaken does it mean that if this tenth light falls will a new one take their place but won't be the one we need so we have to keep this one alive I I think they claim that this is a tenth light, but they are just mistaken. Predictive riddles and working in prophecies. Oh, this is not... My specialty. Well, mine. But I think he's going to be more pissed off that the book was erased. I think that's evidence of something greater. I wonder if it also means that our names being placed into it for those O's is also erased. I suppose we'll find out when we speak with them. Hmm. Keep this close to the chest now. We don't want to alarm the group. Did we what? Sorry. Uh, I was like, the camera's all just changed, and it was because something on my laptop went weird. Carry, carry on. I think that he... If there's any questions left to ask, asking him directly might be the last uh, message of information we can get out of this as a... I don't believe the book is going to teach us anything more. I don't think so either. But she will hold it and look at it and just say, Thank you. And with that, the aura around you fades. Now it's on us to make sure it wasn't a waste. All right. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? I haven't eaten. It feels like days. Should be Good. rested before we meet with him. Okay. Gonna go to that nice tavern they started with when they got here. Sure. Mm. There is an. There is a. When you've walked the streets of the river recently, it's been there's been an element of concern, worry, and fear that's crept over the streets. That there's a hum of it, as with any nation embroiled in war. There's that collective worry that can just kind of be sensed. That has been replaced by jubilation, hope as you're wandering around. Um, feels almost like the eve of a festival. Of pre-winter's day, like that kind of, or, or one of the high holy days. There's just that positive energy that just hums through the streets. But you find your place to eat. As a, Maybe reach out. Oh. As, a, as a quick question to Valma and James, mm -hmm. I know we're probably going to have to backtrack to work out what's going on in the garden. Mm -hmm. Say the garden. In the coming days, what are your, what are you planning to do? Like, are you 
are you planning on and it's kind of a difficult question right now but what are the initial plans just so i know if i can guide you with something or to see if you can pick up some uh, some context clues that's basically i need to know roughly where you're going so i can maybe hint some things <laughs> uh i think that might be a is that too tough a, a case question? of we might need to talk about it for like an hour after the stream ends and, and then tell Nothing. you because uh, right now i'm not i'm not super sure yeah yeah no worries okay that's fine then uh we can come back on that anyway britain so continue I'm scared, Bratton. I know. I mean, you know me. I'm, I'm the type of person that I see a threat, I tackle it face on and give it all I've got. But this is... I feel like I'm swinging at shadows here. And according to the book, I literally am swinging at shadows here. Yeah. But I think the worst of it all is that me and Valmir and Zadar and Darius Zep and Kiffis we all kicked the fucking apocalypse off and didn't even realize we were doing it. I think it's pretty presumptuous that you all managed to jumpstart this whole thing. I think this is going to happen one way or the other. <laughs> You've told know. me about this that I saw Greer, and that they were all trying to open the belt box, so if it wasn't you, it was going to be somebody. That's what I was wondering about him recently as well. <laughs> if there was any catalyst to begin this whole thing, he would be the one in the know. And I distinctly recall that when we were entering the cube prison that held Joanna, he deliberately went the other direction. Almost intentionally not paying attention to what was happening. You know, obviously not looking at something, does that make any sort of sense? Mm -hmm. Well, the rest of us went in. Except the dark. Fine. Zadar stayed outside to keep him from paying attention. Well, it was also, he was looking away on purpose, too. I just... I, I'd have to check the notes, but I'm pretty sure Zadar was the one who kept them from being invested in the opening of the cube. He was the one that tried to hide it from him. That's why Zadar separated from the group. That was the first time in the campaign Zadar lied to somebody. Yeah, I think so. I think that's. Uh, I think Zadar distracted him because then he came back to the cube and was like, "No, no, no, no. Where is it?" Yeah, and that's when Zadar managed to convince him that I think it's been like because he because reading the Draconic, he said, "I think it's been sealed. I think if they're inside, they've been trapped inside." And Greer's like, "You know what? Hands free. I'm done. Walking away." <laughs> Because you all came out invisibly. We did. Thank right. You. Sorry. Sure. But I cannot still help but wonder if he knew. I mean... Who's to say? Him, probably. But we wouldn't get a straight answer if we asked him. Nobody gives straight answers around here. If he wanted to get a straight answer, we'd have to go back to Redbury. And I, if memory serves, he was the one that was on the side of the Eladrin back then. Oh, well, I don't have a teleportation circle to Redberry anyway. Which I think is kind of odd. Do you think I should have gotten that one? <laughs> Brett literally just shrugged his shoulders like, Actually, why are you asking available. me? One wasn't available. 
Yeah, no, Repri wasn't. Uh, well, actually, no. I think I said pretty much everywhere in. No, I don't think Repri was on the list. I think I said Rhiannon location. Did I? I gotta have to check the list again. You gave me all across the world three Aladdin locations, but Redberry was not on that list. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Most major cities in the Rhiannon. It's not Rhiannon. It's it's who? Currently, technically. Well, it is technically speaking Rhiannon. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Shit. Because uh, when we were while we were in Redbury, it was under the current ownership of the Rian because they had won it in the last war. Well, something tells me he'll show up again later. He might. It, it, I, I think that might be jumping at straws. I mean, these are individuals that, that they claim to know it was a weapon. They believed it was a, a weapon, but a weapon to do what? That is the next... Uh, for what? The prophecy talks a lot about a girl who is meant to lead the charge, but that doesn't strike me as a weapon, that strikes me as a leader. Depends on what your definition of a weapon is. She just points to his sword. I'm pretty used to that one. Well, let me put it this way. If you were looking for something, uh, a gun that you could point at the head of somebody. Would you call somebody who could pull that trigger? Somebody who could do that? Would you call them a weapon? If you, Ruby, were to cast a spell that were to hypothetically destroy a city, would some people not look at you as if you were the weapon of that destruction? The instrument of that destruction? Also possible that metaphor and translation and prophecies are just really hard to finagle and that's just the term they went with. But yes, I, aim what you're, I know what you're aiming at. With what we've looked at this, the child is a lot of things, but a one interpretation could very much be a weapon pointed at the heads of the very gods. A weapon against the darkness. A weapon against the light. Depending Not necessarily on separated from each other. <laughs> one leads into the others. That's what everything has been telling us. If you also Either. consider that the more that we fight against this, the more that we are just becoming the instruments of what causes it to be. Self-fulfilling prophecy? I had. I'm not giving up. That is the least surprising thing I've heard all day. I like to be consistent. You I know me. Giving up... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say. No, continue, continue. I thought you. I thought the. I thought you were. No. Find it down. Continue. Keep going. No, giving up is the least of my personality quirks. You don't know how to quit. Better for worse. But we at least agree that the prophecy is happening, though we do not know all of its contexts. I think, and this is what worries me the most. I think. Uh, Part of the mention of house keeps talking that nobody will even know that it's happening i think the fact that the book of uh, ascension and by extension the book of annihilation has just become unreadable is privy to that it's hard to see the end coming when you've lost track of the evidence that it's there she holds up her translation please tell me it's still here looks at it just to make sure <laughs> yep still there. okay good Phew. Phew. Oh, that would have been great, great, like, DM honey, I guess. <laughs> All written texts have gone. <laughs> Every wizard oh, is no. like, fuck, no shit. All, all evidence of the end times are now gone because you aren't allowed to know that this is the end times. Which further proves that it is the end times. Yes, <sighs> but only for those that know. The masses don't, and that's what's important. She'll reach out and grab his hand. You with me? I am. I'm sworn by oath to prevent interference from the outer planes from affecting this one. If I back down from trying to stop this from happening, then by very definition, I would be breaking my oath. I'll take that as a yes. 
So, no, not with me, but you're with me. Yeah, I, okay, it's okay. Say yes without saying yes. I, I get it. Bastard. Brent's just watching her, like, he's trying not to smile, but he's just, he's clearly enjoying the, uh, he teases her how he can, okay? Uh, I do find it kind of humbling that I was mentioned in this prophecy. No, the protectors? Like, well, no, specifically. A maid will watch it happen and will harden her resolve. Eh? 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 Are you a maid? Are you really going to ask me that question? I don't think it's I a guess, little... Maid as uh, in the fair suppose, lady. Yes, I, I guess that is... I was looking at it literal. You're right. We are dealing with old translations. It is entirely possible that a maid would be a reference to a maiden. So before we progress to the, the <laughs> possible final scene of tonight, I would ask, would someone from the assembled cast like to give me a dramatic reading of the Book of Annihilation. Um, oh. Because I, we've been talking about it, we've doing a lot of discussion of yeah. it, and the, I, I feel you. like the audience could use it. Um, this is, uh, I mean, I, also, I feel like... I will also make this handout available on Patreon. <laughs> yes, uh, no, we, this is... Each get a paragraph uh, or oh, something? Oh, I, yeah, I specifically... Yeah. I endorse this as uh, as also because if you've been paying attention to Lancer, uh, Roach has been doing so much work writing stuff for the campaign that you all don't get to see unless we share it with you or, you know, potentially in the future, you subscribe to our Patreon. Uh, <laughs> we should each yes. do a paragraph. Okay, yeah, each, each do a paragraph. It is, it is a lot to read, yeah. It is, it is a big, it is about 1,700 words, 1,500 words-ish, I think. Um I'll do the pretext, and then if we go, we'll pick on an the... order: one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Go, go with how we appear in Discord. So me, we'll start with Mitch, but then go you, J uh, you, then James, then me, then Breton. Okay, I'll go last. I just rolled a four on a d4. Well, it's easier if we just have an actual order we can refer to let's, looking let's, at it. Let's, oh. let's let's go let's go let's go Breton. Um, Ruby, Valmir, James, because that's the order you appear on screen. Okay. On stream. Oh yeah, fair, fair. Okay. Um, and do you know what would have been really cool if I could have set this up? Is that it was, oh, actually no? I can, I can fucking, I can go full screen on each of you as we, as we go through. Yeah, fuck it, let's do that. I'm gonna be artsy with this. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, so I will start this off then. The Book of Annihilation, specifically the prophecy of St. Agnes of, I of Ivy. Uh, the Book of Ascension is the final anthology that forms the Book of Ascension. Sorry, that's the typo I forgot to re remake. The Book of Annihilation... <laughs> Me and Lambert talked about this as well, isn't it? <clears throat> the Book of Annihilation is the final book in the anthology that forms the Book of Ascension. It is formed from a prophetic dream which a deva of the Chainbreaker came to St. Agnes to warn her of the end. The more she recalled the prophecy, the more her resilience to it, and uh, the more her resilience to its overwhelming madness waned. Upon hearing the dream, Agnes never slept again, using every breath to warn the world of what she saw. She died just one year after um, beginning her pilgrimage of Doomsay, in which she shared what she, she learned. This is penned by her hand at her earliest recollection. Over to Sorry. Cast. Yeah, no, I was, I was, I was not, but I was also watching the stream to wonder when I would switch over. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to read this in character voice because that just makes it feel more, far more dramatic. Yeah. The Azamon <laughs> Marenki uh, no, <laughs> uh, spoke to me in colors within the realm of sleep. I recall my final dream so that those who will hear it might heed its darkness. Just as the first following the concert of the divine, the beginning of the end will hearken the same, green and pleasant. It is not a predilection or curse, nor is it prophecy, but a conjunction of the strands of being, taut and tangled like a knot in the lace of a boot. Mortality as it looks on the face of Elendor will be none the wiser the clock had begun ticking. 
The end has but one carrion call, but one tolling bell stroke. The end will begin with the actions of one mortal girl, whether she knows it or not. She will be thrust to the fates and forced to carve a path in good. And by the actions of others, she would break one of the seals that binds us and keeps divinity at bay. Divinity will likewise respond. They will react and armed champions to fix the writing's wrongs. The status quo will fail, masked by the marching of ancient foes. But yes, the true end has not dawned, for the crisis is vague. The true harbinger of the end lies not in the action, not in the gods or the child. It lies with those who would protect them. Yet in the end, to underwrite the undoable, it is in them that we must trust. With black, the bubonic soil will be the first shadow to form on the dial. Should it reach the apex of our story, should the shadows form heavy on the dawn, then the final night will fall from celestial and hell, elemental and abyssal brought forth and burn the skies anew. But yet the dial song has just begun. Nine shadows will rise by the time the dawn is done. The child wakes the wars to come. The second shadow will form when those begot, begone, and silenced will reach out of the first and enact their violence. <clears throat> the long-gone rain reigniting with a spark, the skies will darken with the second shadow as stone is hewn and fields left fallow. When valor stood, swords became plowshares. Where valor stood, plowshares became swords. Underneath the old shadow's wing, it is valor that would stand and stands a sing. As the second dial's darkness draws a seal, should find protective halls. But in the dark there is but malice. A third seal will rise from an emperor's palace. A maid will watch as it all unfolds. The lessons they learn will harden resolve. A child will lurch into the fight. With the death of second light and the birth of third shadow, plague will come and hearts will sallow. Healers will walk in the death, doing duty trying best using the powers of the gods on high, the lessons learnt from mortal minds. The blind, the sick, the ailing feeble are all but mere pieces impertinent to the shadows. A child will watch so many die, and try their best to let that decide. While the shadows pull, the work was not to kill at all. They watched and laughed as the knots tightened, and with it Third Dawn's light end. In this blunder, Third Dial set, Third Seal sundered. The shadow now fills the cracks in the mirror. Hey. The maid that looked will not be hey. faction fine. <laughs> desperation will morph to look like hope. In desperation, rulers choke. They will call to a gods who will not hear them. Not because they do not care. In fact, that is why they are not there. It is in the fourth shadow's rise that those foes of old Medostris home will fight to break through the weakened frame. The light has thinned. In darkness claimed the warriors now yet remain a child will take to banner and call the child they need to win this war the war is long for mortal soul the war has made the immortal fall this shadow's climax lies not in the seals this dials darkness curtains time honored evil back to Beth. In five, the shadows feel much lighter, of falsehood in the greater fate, but mortal feelings will abate. Deus will call the faithful home, if Deus still stands to claim their own. If Deus fell, a new will take them, if only to be yet mistaken. Take heart, dear child, for this is a moment where all unslip the tire of the knot, emerging of that time forgot. But in a slip the heavens call, and if all fails, the seal will fall. In that moment, the child's potential stirs, 
as they will come keep them all. In the shade of six, Umbral stir turns to fire as the Ancient Ones rise and wings will fall. Demonic creatures void at all. Discordant and disallowed, they'll breach the world unavowed. Divinity will fight and hold them at bay with newfound force and faithful stay. Those who left unraptured will feel the fires as chaos reigns as the new occupiers. In wake of lands unconquered, now left bare from those yet gone, the ending stanza of days long sawn will final code of rhyme and song. The child will pipe and valiant call, her godly sire will return from mirrored halls. The shadow's grip have weakened and dial's neck seal. The shadow now seven light claim, yet three lights yet to guide their way. In seven, the world will quake and stir as hallowed them draws closer still and as elemental wake will cleave anew the land the green and pleasant dew. The earth will shake, the skies will burn, water rise and winds rip. Like those who first walked the fragment, the world will shift to plates of old. Channeled divinity will fold and crumble as the world we know will be left but sundered. A child will face the floods, embrace the waves. They'll look and pray to gods whose final gasp will order the shade on dial of eight. The seal's too weak to hold back fate. In light of nine, all left stand, as a king of never walks the land. In their coming the end proclaim, shadow storm has all light claimed. For thousands and unending a war restarts, one that will claim all mortal hearts. Their seals lost, left dull and weak, the gods are dead, scattered and meek. The mirror in the mist left shattered cleft twain, the mirror whose worlds do not remain. In this seemingly unending cycle, the ichor will spread to reflections vital. The weakness will break all that we know, the ending of all, the curtain and show. The halls all end as the planes collide, the damned left few left with broken minds. For even they who brought the end refute to even comprehend the being in which this all began. In their expulsion to the weave that ties us, their death-throed rhythms are often guide us. Some recognize this is fate, but name forgot this giant's wake. Their death began at all, all dais, damned king and all. For they are formed that mirror cracked, and they all... In they we all end, fade to black. So in names long left before, sealed be but the fate of Elendor. Their name forgot is an avatar for another. One incomprehensible, one and all. But what of the child? What of their fate? What of the song which death debates? What of the end left to obfuscate? In this child lies one final hope, one dream come true, one final score. In their power there lies a chance to fix the mirror and seal away what could be and what will be. If fate would sway in divine resonance of they, a power to seal and keep at bay. In a name forgot more greater than kings, the seal could unknot the end of things. To plain and plain and mirrored hall, to where they died to shape it all. Born they were to begin the end, ascend they will, to close on Genesis. Be warned of the story my dream did tell. It was shown to me, and in color I yell. Time draws in but aloof, linear thought is not proof. As shadows shape throughout the day, they grow too in shade on summer's day. As clean as fate is always shaping, so too are the shadows we are but chasing. The song sung is harmony discordant, the melody rhyme and rhythm an overlapping torrent. It all grows together to fill the crack. Yay, I like that. Thanks, guys. Thank you for, you like... Know, you, you wrote it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eh, eh. I mean, 
Eh, I mean, well performed. I loved it. That was good. That was like, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, the, there was a new level of fulfillment there, just hearing hearing those words and actually making them, like, hearing them out loud outside of my head as well was really like, ah, oh, yes. This does make sense to me. <laughs> um, so, Wait, it does? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so there you go, everybody. There's the prophecy uh, told dramatically by various characters from the show. Um, or should I just come in and do the last versus Kifis? Uh, <laughs> 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 um, which would have been fucking hilarious. Um, but yes, let's us now go to what I'll call the final scene for today. As in evening light, uh, you... Breton and Ruby enter the Emperor's palace once more. No servant around, nothing of the sort, but you are in the throne room and the Emperor sits waiting expectantly. She will stride forward and open the blank book and set it before him. An end is coming. We walk in the last days. He stands and uh, picks up the Um, <coughs> um, perhaps. Perhaps. And he just like flicks the page. And then shows it back to you. Sure, look at it. The words returned. You are his avatar. That is just... Speech. I... have adopted... and accepted a gift of the faith. As a note, he is wearing the helmet. Like, sure. he hasn't changed outfit at all. You repaired the seal. Knowing what would happen. Knowing what could happen. Emperor, there is only one chance that we all walk away from this and Elendor is left whole. There is a summit coming. A meeting. Between all the leaders of this war. To show them, and you, that the end is coming. This book, this prophecy, is happening. And the only way to get to the future is together.
The shadows of our past are coming. The ones we thought banished are returning. Evil gods, dragons, cults. Together or not, forces are seeking to break the divinity around this world and shroud it in darkness. We will not survive if we do not unite. You heard back from the rest of your party then? There is to be a meeting. Yes. Elijah the Immortal has agreed to have a summit. Did Valmir describe that they're not stopping the war, however? It would have been James. James would have been the one that was responsible. James, for the excuse me. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I probably would have relayed that they don't intend to continue the ceasefire. They is how it worded it. They will continue fighting until proven otherwise. But I beg of you not to use your weapon. If this prophecy is any way related to it, then the plague that will be unleashed is part of it. Please do not use it. If not for the millions of countless civilians who would die, then for Elendor itself, who would be put at risk. For your own people. For all people. I am providing every avenue to not use it. I've already given you that assurance. But if these talks sour, we need to be ready for the end. And we can't be ready for the end if we're stuck in a conflict now. The answer to that is not genocide. I disagree with them vehemently. My world, my home is at stake as well in this war. But this is not the answer. You don't win like this. I hope I don't have to. I can't promise what will happen if it is used. I am not a diviner. I am just a girl struggling to hold this world together with both hands. But I do know that if this prophecy is true and you use the weapon, necessary or not, in your eyes, you might very well damn us all. So I beg you not to. No matter how bleak or desperate things may seem, do not use it. Be better than them. She's desperate. There, there is... Make a persuasion check. Alright, Ruby, this is your chance. You have it. You have it. You can do it. This is the one that matters. Actually, by saying that, I make myself roll a one, I'm sure, but we'll see. Uh, 22. I understand your fear. You know how hard and heavy my heart feels towards this.
but I refuse to close that door until I know. <laughs> I've read the same prophecy. I've read the same words. I know the line we walk. It's a thin one. For the first time. Oh, I walk it in faith. And I will be guided as with everything I've ever done. So many people seem to think I act out of fear. And I think they have misunderstood it. It has never been out of fear. It has been out of hope and love. And she'll just turn and look to Breton. That's the trouble with prophecies. It's impossible to know what actually pertains to what. Avoid one play, cause another. How often are the fates of mortal men met on the path they take to avoid them? You took a path. To our eyes, it seems like we are walking straight forward down the path we do not want to be on, and yet, even now, we might still avoid it. I suppose that if the onus of you cannot settle this conflict, then perhaps we should see what we can do to prevent these things from getting worse. I will not say by any means necessary, but... This war, the very fabric of this war, it is an ending. It is a conduit for all endings. Stop it, it must end. But with what they've asked for, we cannot just... I would never dream of asking you to accept their conditions. Because their conditions are unfair, unkind, and may very well damn us as much as anything. The Ladrin... The Immortal? has been brought to reason before. Both in the eyes of all our nations and in the eyes of fate itself. Whilst they are my enemy, I hope we can come to an agreement. In the tales of old, the pantheon of Albe, the light, stood with the pantheon of the elves together against the darkness. It can happen again. And maybe even this time, a more fair, treatment for all when it is done if you will give it that chance and that is all I ask of you to do give it a chance I asked Hope. you I asked your friends to go as my ambassador and hopefully they have convinced Eladrin to do the same to give you and the Iron Duke and the kings of Nodathel, 
chance to be better. And even I would admit that if he is adamant about continuing this war, regardless of what is going on, well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. But I have seen what anger can do. And he is angry. And she just looks at the book as if to point out there is a reason for his anger. We are going to do everything in our power to try and stop this from happening. And I realize by the very act of us doing this, we may also be instrumented into causing it to happen. The irony is not lost on me. <clears throat> but if that time comes, and if we feel like we have a solution to keep this in from being the end, I ask that you trust us. Make another persuasion check, Ren. Sure. Would that be with advantage because they helped, or...? I use my words correctly. Okay. I'm not as good at this as Ruby, but I'm not bad at it. Uh, rolled off the 14 to the 4. That's an 11. Quick, throw a die at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are also guided by faith. And all we can do is walk the path we make. Uh, Breton will just take a deep You'll... breath and nod. Go ahead, finish. Sorry. You're going to need to prepare your words if you're going to be speaking to every single leader of this continent and trying to bring them together in some great alliance against the enemies of old. We need Joanna. What is it, Labrum's land a girl? The child of prophecy, yes. Perhaps. Oh, trust me. <laughs> Been reading this for the last two weeks. I wasn't there, but from what I've learned, her being freed, returned, brought back, allowed to return home, is the conduit of which all of this has begun. Oh yes, no. If the reading is right, then my companions and I, not him, pointing to Breton, started this whole kaflunkle. I don't even know that's the correct leg, render, leg, the, the word from Legrand's land. I'm sure Zepp would correct me. That's you, would have to, you would have to remind me, Your Majesty, but I do believe that part of this war being started amongst the tensions of Elijah himself was an ambassador of Redberry was lost, and you were blamed for it. There are various... Sorry. There are various causes... It's just the next excuse in line, but it was one. What do they call it? A causes belli? He wanted a re excuse? As I pointed out to you, uh, sometimes these things are going to happen whether or not we're involved or not. It's also the beauty of prophecy. You can always draw a lot of, co of adjacency. Everything's connected, even if it's not. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we have to walk right into it. But it does mean that everybody should know. Uh, Brighton is going to pull out a Sending Stone. Uh, and he is going to say, James, bad news. I think it's safe to say that we are on the beginning of the track to the end. What we have to do 
at all costs is in this war. And I don't just mean because of what's at stake, I mean because if we do not, it may very well be the conduit to the end of time. You know, light conversation! <laughs> James is just like, gonna get that just like whilst in some sort of uh, royal elven building. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, probably sitting in the lab doing research, I'd imagine, yeah. um, after the party. Um, we need to confirm a date, but I recommend we use the Skyfire as neutral ground. Uh, you I would res oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I would respond simply with, understood, we had a similar feeling a Ladrin the Immortal is ready to meet all those that we can bring together. So, do your due diligence to convince those on your end of the world. And we'll do ours to make sure that it comes to the table. Or that the Ladrin continues to come to the table. <clears throat> is what I would have said. And Breton will just confirm that with a... Uh... A seal has been repaired, and a king has ascended. No response after that. Just oh, that's okay. the only context he yeah. gives for it. Mm -hmm. Yep. At some point, could we have found like after the party? If this is like two days after the party, could we have found like uh, because we'd have been told what they were doing, reading the book and stuff. Could mm -hmm. we have like gone and found like a copy of this as well? Just so that, a first, like, a first edition you know, copy, not a first edition copy, no, but like, you not in the Elandrian Empire, you wouldn't have. Yeah, okay. that's that's literally the key, like, the key faith text of the king that never was, which Elandrian does not allow. <laughs> but some historian might have some knowledge of it, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, you, you can their version you, of it. You, you you can definitely find variants. Just so, it. just so, like, game wise, like our characters can have the knowledge of the long ass so, poem that we just read out yeah there's there's this makes we, things easier well it's the thing is if one zet finds out the way is that it's annoying because we this is the thing i was gonna do but we can't do it because we're now missing half mm -hmm. a group so in the speaking same, of <laughs> in, in, in the same way that uh the iron duke astral projected his way to copy the plans i was going to get a copy sent a word that would do would do like a pass around essentially a copy via those methods by going through Zed essentially. But we'll have to do there's mechanics obviously and we need to work out where people are, etc. Hopefully so, it doesn't follow the problem with the rubber mill that by the time they get it, the book of foot sension. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah. So unless you have anything else you'd like to say to the Emperor, I think we will leave it there for today. Um Be better. <laughs> it's the last it's just Listen, I think this guy is trying to be the best that he can be. Like, no, <laughs> don't yeah, give in to I hate. Mean, I mean, no. he's. I've got he's my got... finger over the nuclear button, and I will use it. But I'm being the best it can be. <laughs> the the finger isn't down yet. There's still six inches between my. Finger I turn and the button. I turn people into trees. I'm the good guy. I no, mean, there's equal look, degrees of shitty look, around here. Yes, that's with every, everyone's. Just, everyone is the the villain. Like the villain Nobody's is. Nobody's backing down either. Yeah, it's like the villain of one story is the hero of another. The villain of one story is the hero of another. So what we really need is a brave soldier who is given the command on one side but refuses it, becomes a war criminal to their side, but ends the war for both. You know, um, use Shadow Long. This, this, is, this, is, this is Elendor's version of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Anyway, uh, no. hey everybody, we're going to end tonight's session here. So all we got left to do is to thank everyone who's been here and those who also haven't. So thank you to, um, to uh, of God, DM Lake, to Kaida Odder, to Lord Lambert, to uh, Bethany Rose. Rose. There we go. No, I had it. I had it. I was almost there. Um, so I was just trying to get the old, like, Post script that I'm so used to saying out of my head to Commissar Roach to Mordred Viking and to Ghibli Jam. I've been Mitch Man. We have been the Compotocast. We will see you next week. Uh, join us tomorrow for more Lancer and join us on Wednesday for more Cyberpunk. We will see you guys around. Bye bye now. Stompy robots! <laughs>